Stone of Hope at um, for grief counseling. Okay. And I did that training last year, really enjoyed it. Um, but now they canceled it. It was supposed to be in person and they canceled it. So it's like, okay, you know, I'm kind of bummed about it. Last year, really enjoyed um, it. Not just because I, you know, not because I just because I paid my money, but just I hadn't seen these folks in a couple of years. Um, but it's, um, Dang, that's awful. Yeah, but we 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 see each other on Zoom. We still do the monthly meetings on Zoom. So um, they do um, drug counseling credits, and um, we don't have very many nurses, but we do have a lot of therapists that are um, are there. So you could get um, CEUs from that. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely love to learn more about that. Yeah. So, as a matter of fact, it was, um, I had kind of plugged Kathy into this group, and that was how she met some of the people who work for NAMI. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. So, anyway, I, I hadn't even thought about um, asking you if you would want to attend some of those, but some of them are good, especially if um, we've got a lot of um, drug counseling folks, and it's because it is EAP, the Employee Assistance Program professionals, which I do training for. Okay. Um, yeah, they have a lot of a lot of other uh, what they call modalities in there, and we get a lot of people who sponsor events or who come out and do trainings from some of the facilities where inpatient uh, okay stress. so it's always like all these connections that um yeah so anyway Good networking sounds like yeah. yeah yeah and so it's every third friday of the month and they cancel <laughs> <laughs> so oh well but well, i'm sure you'll get some type of credit i mean I I hope so. Yeah, I trust that um, that that I'll get my little money back. Um, but and, but the other thing was is I had made arrangements since I was going to be out of the house. I had also arranged to get my hair done after the meeting, and I was like, okay. And then once I get my hair done, I could go and stop by here and stop by here and doing that little stuff. But let me ask you this: I'm acting like ain't nobody uh, listening to this yet. But that's me, how I was when I pulled my gum out of my mouth. I was like. <laughs> We're on live right now. All right. So let me ask you this though before we uh before we start, like like we ain't already started. But um, so what do you think about so you know I get into a cold shower every day, right? Because mm -hmm. um I'm shocking my body. I was I was talking to my um I had yoga last night. And so I was the only student that showed up, but two of the teachers showed up. So I was like, ah, I was like, you know, I was running behind, running late. And I said, and if, if y'all not going to have class and she was like, well, you're here. And I said, well, <laughs> I said, but I still got to change into some different pants, some yoga pants. So I said, so let me ask y'all. So, so we started talking. Right. I started talking to them and um, and we were talking about, you know, I've been doing a lot of reading around this epigenetics and energy work and all of this stuff. And so one of the things that um, we I was talking to them about was this habit. You know, they were saying that our bodies have certain habits and so mm -hmm. we pull energy in certain areas and it makes it. You know, so it's like this thing of us wrestling with our bodies. And I was like, well, mm -hmm. said, in order for, for me to break the habit, I said, that's one of the reasons why I jump into a cold shower. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, it's almost like making my body submit, you know, mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. 
it's that kind of thing. But as, as we started talking through it, I was like thinking to myself, now I didn't talk to Stephanie about grounding and stuff like that. And it's cold outside. And I want to see what you think about this cold therapy that people talk about all the time. Like, do you want to go outside and get barefoot and walk around for a little while today? Yeah. <laughs> that seems like it would just be so what, invigorating. <laughs> Yeah, actually, today I thought after I leave the doctor's office, I know that I have some responsible things to do. I got to do billing. I got to do patient notes. But I was like, I think I want to go sledding. Oh. And so I was going to pull my sled out um, when I get back from the doctor's. And I was going to take a couple of ropes down the slope behind the rock, shaker rock. Yeah, that's where Alan lives at now over there. Oh, yeah. So I was going to go there and... um just do what I do every winter and uh I don't know if I have a sled <sighs> that would be cool I know I have a big one I mean both of us could get on it <laughs> get on it but it's yeah that's what I was gonna do um first by the snow I did it last year and I like that heel it's not too intimidating it's enough and it's enough to get back, you know, got to walk back up. But they have a little, they get on the other side, they got a little kitty one. Uh -huh. You know, like it's a little smaller. But I like the big one. Because uh, uh, <laughs> I was like thinking to myself, because I was, I, you know, I was thinking to myself, should I go outside and just take off my shoes and stand on the ground and ground for a minute? Or should I do something else? But sledding sounds even better. Yeah, well, you could do both. I saw a gentleman uh, when I was taking my mom to the doctor this week, uh, right at the, you know, when you're getting ready. To, I don't know what that street is. Is it Fairhill? I think it's Fairhill, the, the one that goes down and then you make the left, you know, you make the right hand turn going towards the hospital. So I saw this gentleman, you know, jogging, he had on his little jogging, running shorts and, um, and the snow was so high, right? So he like just, like just kept running in the deep snow until he got onto wherever there was a running pace again and then started running up like going towards Coventry um and I was like oh my god that feels so good my mother's like what are you talking about I was like he just ran through the snow <laughs> I was like I know that's gotta feel so good she was like mm, mm, mm. <laughs> He just had on some, you know, a bit, you know, a long sleeve shirt, but the little running shorts and his tennis uh -huh. shoes, and his legs was bare, and he was, t -t 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 and that's no, <laughs> yeah, you know. Um, and good morning, Ruth. Fantastic good Friday. Good morning. Good yes, morning, it is. Erica. Good morning, Erica. <laughs> Erica, I know you want to go sledding. <laughs> that's right up your alley. <laughs> yeah. So, um. So it's interesting because, you know, on that Gwyneth Paltrow's thing, Goop, uh, the Goop Lab, um, they had this thing where um, they had all of these people jump into this Arctic yeah, water. cold water mm -hmm. and, and, you know, swim to the other side and then talked about how our bodies are made to withstand the cold and the heat and go through all these fluctuations and that we make ourselves old by not like using the the full possibility or expanse of what our bodies can do ah oh, she says she in michigan and there's no snow there okay uh, yeah there's no snow in chicago either i'm like what's up universe <laughs> <laughs> Michelle said she went walking. Yes, she's been walking every day this week. Um, our time, because we usually walk together around nine o'clock ish, my time. And uh, she's been walking. So, I mean, we walk in the cold, but um, yeah. she's been walking. 
Yeah, Erica says it's cold. And uh, <laughs> Ruth says it's 50 degrees in Colorado Springs. Like, okay, are you in Colorado Springs? <laughs> I'll go there. <laughs> yeah. They got snow for sure. Okay. Um, Erica says it's 17 degrees in Michigan. So, yeah. It's cold here. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that, look, that sounds good. I, um, I've seen some sleds, but, um, you got a big one. You got the big wooden one with the little, the oh, no, not a toboggan sled like that. No, I just got the, um, it's the, the new age. I don't know what that material is, but it's that, super slippery. That plastic and, kind of stuff. That yeah. But you can hold huh, <laughs> it swirls. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! I went sledding last year by myself, and I came back, and I was like, "Mom, I might have broke my arm." Because oh, <laughs> I tumbled over and it landed on top of me, but it's not heavy. But um, it was fun, and I was like, "Okay, I'm gonna walk up this hill one more time and just go down." And if I broke something, at least this will be my last trip. Down the hill. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah, then we, we should plan a tubing trip. Okay. Mm-hmm. Should, yeah, less, less, less. Yeah, but I'll sled today because I, I sure thought about it. I didn't, you know, I had to give myself permission. You know, I know I got stuff I should be doing, but I was like, I want to sled today. The kids are in school. <laughs> it's like I had to heal to myself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that'd be slick. Uh, Erica, I want to go tubing. I know you do. That sounds right up your alley. <laughs> 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 that sounds right up your alley so yeah let's um let's talk about that so um we are in chapter one we finally made it yes and um and so this this starts off um so so not only was i on the the cold and the cold therapy grounding stuff this morning but also I've just been like immersing myself in um, last yesterday, just being able to talk to them for that hour in the yoga class was mm -hmm. real to, um, to talk about energy and, and how it works. And then to think through just not, not just sometimes it's the resistance that, people have to you know because if you if you're not aware of it if, or if it's something that you haven't seen before there's this natural resistance that people have to to things and one of the things that is somebody told me a couple of years ago which I, I found intriguing is is that when we're learning learning is uncomfortable like growth and expansion makes people uncomfortable mm -hmm. and there's a resistance before there's acceptance and so the resistance says no that couldn't possibly be no i couldn't you know the resistance is, is you know we put up our resistance and then and then what um this morning as i i listened to rhonda for a minute and rhonda started talking about she said that she has walked up to the line of atheism and she says but there was all of you know she was like but thank goodness something pulled us back and i said you know what walk into the line is good you yeah, know yeah to, to live in the question is good because it's when we think that we know all the time that we shut ourselves off from actually and, we, and the fact that we think that we're right yes Yes, yes, yes. And so one of the things that I loved about, you know, Socrates and learning about Socrates is Socrates used to had this quote that he said that the more that I know, the more I know I don't know. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times we don't recognize that we're only scratching the surface of what's Absolutely. for us, for our bodies, mm -hmm. for for what we can do in this in in this you know in this world and so as we open ourselves up with just curiosity right to say mm, you know 
is this possible? Is, you know, I, I used to have this thing, um, you know how I always talk about I wrestle and, and argue mm -hmm. with God, right? I used to ask the question all the time, are you a deceiver, right? <laughs> that, that was one of my questions all the time. Are you a deceiver? I mean, because if this is not possible, why even put it in our in in the realm of our awareness if it's not possible? And so I mm. can't help but believe that, you know, that things, even though I don't know how to do them sometimes, that they're that that they aren't real. And so that's why I keep jumping in you know, anyway, because I'm thinking to myself, if I just keep jumping, it's kind of like, it's, I guess I equate it to kind of like cooking a dish and you don't quite know how it's going to turn out, right? But right. You, you just kind of do it any, I, I can't help but think that the people who make all these recipes up or who first discovered flour and how to make bread and, and the process, it was just an experiment. Mm -hmm. The early alchemist, mm -hmm. so why not think that, you know, th that all of this stuff that we see around us, why not know, believe that we are healers and have the ability to heal? Why not believe that when our prayers go up, that they go into a medium that is not separate from us and that they work absolutely. But because we don't believe that, because we're busy trying to say, okay, God, you do it rather than the room me, mm -hmm. all of these, I mean, we're using the very power that is God's power, right? It's not just to breathe, just to, are my eyes blinking, my mouth moving, that all of that is yes. the all in all, yes. Yes, all of that. I mean, the very air that we breathe. Mm -hmm. Ah, and the fact that we can, it is, mm -hmm. It's amazing the stuff that we cut off ourselves, cut ourselves off from because of our own disbelief. Well, I mean, in fairness, didn't start with me. And, oh, girl, <laughs> girl. <laughs> right, right. It, it didn't start with me. I mean, when I think about when I'm listening to you, all I'm hearing is yeah like that's the level of incongruence that we live when we say we you know we give all this honor to to christ but yet we don't believe in the christ consciousness abiding in me right at least i don't see a lot of manifestation of that experience mm -hmm. um i hear a lot of talk about it, i hear a lot of singing about it but i don't see a lot of the manifestation of the Christ consciousness moving and abiding in us, um, the human form of God, right? Right, right. Am I not? I am. I am she too. Yes. Yes. Amen. 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 So, so, so this whole thing is for me. You know, I, you, sometimes it comes back to me that you that you said that that guy said something about you reading these books. Um, it, you know, for me, it is this, you know, stirring up. Let's stir it up. Let's let, let's put this in in the context that 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 you know, it, by other people sharing this stuff, by us sharing our experience, by us doing this particular work, what we're doing is we're stirring up yeah. something yes. each other. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think it's so important that we, that we stir up the pot and we keep it that way so that things don't settle back into complacency or yes. into these ideas about what we can't do. Let's stir it up. Mm -hmm. and, and if nothing else, sometimes we can just go in on the shallow end of the water, but to get in the water is important. So the shallow end of the water. So, so what's a, a, a shallow thing? Sometimes a shallow thing is making up a story about the experience that you've been through. I mean, make, make up a story. And it's amazing when I used to sit in a group of 
of other people and I made up a story, how much that story resonated with everybody in there. Like, oh, I can take this piece and oh, this piece is mine, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and a lot of times we don't allow ourselves that wonder, that curiosity, that, oh, what's here for me kind of feeling. And is that, I think it was Neville Goddard that said the power of imagination is in healing, is in wealth manifestation. Like um, the imagination is like the engine yeah. for yeah. change. It yes. is. Yes, because you know, I got a I got a whole Neville Goddard um section over here. However, I I I haven't read all I, I read him in bits and pieces, right? Mm-hmm. And but what I do know is is that it is one of those things like if, you know, he does a thing where he talks about um, it in terms of what is the word, Um, like as we develop mental pictures, what is that called? Is it it just saying imagining it, you know, like as you see yourself in particular situations and breathe energy. Breathe energy to that, yes. Have the experience from start to finish. Feel it. Wake up in the morning. Look out. I open my blinds with my remote control (laughs) to my bistro sitting on the balcony. Yes. And that's that's the story. Yes. Uh, Every morning, good morning, self. That's it, you know? And yeah, but we have to. We is it and we have to change the narrative Mm -hmm. so we can feel better. Mm -hmm. It changes the feeling. That's how you get trauma, I imagine. That's the work I do anyway. To get trauma out of the body or even let it come to to the surface is what if we change the story? And that's when people realize that that doesn't feel right. That feels fake. Okay, well then let's let's tell the story that you've been telling. Oh, now that feels comfortable, right? Yeah, where you feel that at? You're used to feeling it in this tension in this space. That feels comfortable. So do we want to keep doing that? Like, you know, but having telling the story is important. We talked about that a couple of days ago. Like the narrative, the narrative is very powerful. We are here because of a narrative. We have learned all the stuff that we learned. We are limited because of a narrative that was given to us mm-hmm. that was contrary to where, where our truth. This the chapter one is a perfect example of someone living in a story Uh that was told Uh um all right so here here let's um so he starts off this thing with a quote i think i shared this quote yesterday so um he started off with a quote the past is never dead it's not even past Mm -hmm. i love that i love Mm -hmm. it Because what it does is, you know, I I often say that yesterday ended last night, like I'm going to do what's before me and not get caught up in what has happened before. But one of the things, so the images keep just flowing, flooding to me. When, when, When I read this, it says it's not even past. It's like there is still a life force to what has been, right? There is still resonating that energy that the, the, the blood is crawling out from the ground. It's still, it's still alive, even if we're not looking at it. I call it vibrational escrow. Okay, yes, yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. And so if, um, if, if that is the case, we... What we're doing in these moments when we're, you know, we're, we're looking at the things that have happened before or, or as we turn our attention and we're moving forward, but knowing that the past is not past because it's still informing our present it moment. Is. Yes. And so when we make some shifts in our consciousness, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, I guess I keep getting these these brain farts, and it's like I'm I'm having trouble keeping up with them. Um, 
let me, oh, let's shoot. Here, here we go. Um, let's do nine and then say, okay. So my thing is um, for today, uh, out of A Course in Miracles, I am determined to see this differently. Mm, I love that exercise. Yes. I love that exercise. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes, yes, yes. I, I, you know, when, <laughs> <laughs> so, so when, say for instance, I'm always, you know, that's one of my other arguments with God. I'm like, God, help me see this differently, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What I need is, is that I have a habit of, you know, think in a particular way about something. I got a habit of thinking that, um, a habit of suspecting certain things. I, I, yeah, that's, a, that's good. Yeah. And so <laughs> when, when I know that about myself, I know that, okay, my habitual way of thinking is like, like I was telling somebody, um, telling y'all probably way back at the beginning of the other book, my habit of thinking was if, if I can't find something, I'm always thinking, who took that? Who took mm -hmm. that yeah. from me, right? right. So when I started asking, how can I see this different? I started really being able to be centered in this awareness that, you know, my habit was this, but that's not the truth anymore. And so now I can see it differently. Now I can see that Sometimes things don't appear when I think they ought to appear because I don't need to be doing that right now. I don't, mm. you know, there, there's a shift in, in, in whatever that may be. Even with that um, thing, when we talked about a couple of days ago about that idea around the rape, right? Mm -hmm. how, can I, how can I, how is it if I am not a victim of the world I see, if I am not a victim of, the, if you are not a victim of the world that you see, how can you see this differently? Because the world's idea is that it's got to be a particular way. I listened to something in the New Yorker magazine yesterday about a woman who um, whose father was killed by um, by this black guy, and um, she started doing some work in twenty years later. It, she started getting interested in this social justice, and um, and it was really interesting because she went to some workshops, and you know she was trying to figure out what it is that she could do. And she said there was this man who was serving a life term in prison because he killed her father and she made it her mission to get him out of prison, to set him free. And so a lot of the article was about the process that she went through of, of meeting him. And, and But even before she met him, how to set him free in her own mind in her spirit yeah, good mm -hmm. and and so then when she finally met him it was this thing of you know what i'm not looking for something from him this work is work that i've done in me so whether he expresses regret or not the work that i'm doing is on me rather than on him and expecting him to have to um, show a level of, um, of, of remorse or regret, because that was usually what people were asking her for. Like, well, how did you get to the point where you could forgive him and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, it's not about him. It's not. She said only one person had to lose their life that day. She says, that was my father. He lost his life. This man shouldn't have to lose the rest of his because of something that, you know, she was like, who knows what his thought was. And, and the, the interesting thing about that too was, is that this guy was serving a life term in prison for a murder that he didn't commit. He was actually the driver of the getaway car, but they didn't get the guy who actually committed the murder. Wow. And so he got stuck with life in prison for being the driver. So hmm. 
what he said. He said, but don't nobody want to hear that when you go out and you talk about this work. He's like, don't nobody want to hear that you was driving the getaway car. He says, people want to hear that you have, you murdered somebody and you have had a change of heart. He says, it's a better story for people because they feel more comfortable in that story. Mm -hmm. Which no, is yeah, which is like, oh my goodness, right? This, I mean, and, and it was just such a, you know, it's such a rich way of shifting things. So, so as I ask the questions mm. of, of spirit of God, you know, are you a deceiver? Are you deceiving me? Right? And I get back, like, wait a minute, here, here, here's, here's truly what my God would say, right? You tell me, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's your story. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. And so it, it, the ball is right back in my court, you know, to, to make some decisions and to, and to really question what it is that I'm thinking about this stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's not a, just a cut and dry and saying, no, I ain't deceiving you. It's like, well, you know, work it out, work it out. Let me see what you come up with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the that's, that's good. Yeah, yeah, I like that exercise. I remember doing that exercise. Um, hmm. Yeah, I want to see this different. I've had to do that several times currently, recently in my life. Um, so, yeah, I like that exercise. I think we all should challenge ourselves yeah. to, especially where fear comes in and doubt comes in and areas in life where it doesn't feel joyous and yummy and juicy. Those are the areas I, I would challenge. I challenge myself to, to say, I want to see this differently. Yeah. I want to see love in this. I want to see joy in this. I want to see yes, yes in this. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and then and let it unfold because a lot of times we think that we've got to bring meaning to it yes just, just you know just just to back up off of what we believe to be true so if Rhonda said that she went up to the line of being atheist I'm just mm -hmm. saying you know what hang out there for a minute and ask some questions right from that standpoint of view um, I think that what we do is we scare ourselves out Heck of yeah. the exploration. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty. I've done it. Yes. It's like, yes. well, where am I going? What happens now when you're out here falling out of a plane? What, what happens? But you're right where you're supposed to be. We are. Yeah. We are. And so I, I think that, too, we do people a disservice by beating them over the heads with the, you know, what you should do. Don't Get in line. Me. Get over here. Don't shit on me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. She said, why am I comfortable in this story? Great question to ask ourselves. Yeah, Winnie, good morning. Good you morning, know, Winnie. You know, and, and, and it's so interesting to me, you know, every time I, you know, every time I start asking myself about the thoughts that I think. You That's know? an exercise that we all do. Um, think about what you're thinking about. Yes, 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 yes. I, I tell you, I am. So, um. So anyway, so trauma lost and found is chapter one. And I know it's we, we your little alarm is about to go off. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's why I was like saying, okay, let's let's uh, let's at least try to get a couple of sentences in. Um, one of the things that he starts off as saying is he says is that um, it's well documented um, feature of trauma um that there's an inability to articulate exactly what happened to us mm -hmm. so if we use the example that i um that i used the other day about that rape right mm -hmm. um 
I can sit there. There's one part of me that could sit there in that energy and try to tell you what exactly happened. Mm. But as I back up off of the situation, I can, I can talk about from when I met the guy, the, you know, what I was attracted to and how I saw it coming. It's almost like you were sitting on a railroad track. And you see the train coming, you see it coming, you see it coming, it's coming, it's getting closer. You can hear the horn, you can, you know, all of this stuff, all the identifiers are there. But I didn't move. Mm -hmm. I didn't move because there was something that I thought that I had to gain out of this relationship or association with this man. So when we went, um, it was, I don't know which date we were on, but it was, you know, close to when I first met him, we went to Lancers, as a matter of fact, and um, we were sitting at the bar and, you know, some guy across the bar is, you know, checking me out. And this guy, I'm, I'm sitting there and we're content laughing and having drinks and all of this stuff. And this guy gets in this man's face, like, what you looking at? And the guy is like, you know, well. Red flag. <laughs> right. So here it is about to be, you know, grown men. This guy is. You know, this guy is transferring here from, you know, to Cleveland because he's got this, you know, executive position with this company. And he's up here about to have a fight with some fool in a bar over what? So, yes, that's a red flag. And then I continued to see all of these red flags about his aggressiveness, the way he handled me, the way he kissed me, the way he did all of this stuff. And rather than me saying, dude, I got to go. I was still there. So, so, so at the time though, I don't know that I was aware of why I felt like I couldn't move. Mm -hmm. I felt paralyzed to Great make word. a decision to say, oh, I see this train is about to hit me. I need to move. I didn't have that ability to move. <laughs> Whatever. I, I didn't have the ability to move at the time. And I did not know why I was why, why I was sitting there like a deer in the headlights, trying to trying to reconcile what I saw coming with what was actually happening. So when he says this here this inability to articulate what happened is in the midst of it happening. A lot of times that we feel powerless, that's the freeze maybe, right? Yes, that's frozen. And, yeah. and you're, and you're, and the, the, the way the brain works is that you weren't, you weren't frozen in that time. You were frozen in that time, but you were actually frozen in the first time. What do you mean? So if, if you had an experience like that, where somebody overpowered you, even being jumped or whatever, you, that, that's what PTSD is. You become frozen in that time, the past. That's in this past present. Even the past. It right. Over. Yes. Whoa, that's good. Mm-hmm. And so if you haven't healed that hurt, haven't matured her, haven't grown her, haven't nurtured her, she responds like that. She doesn't respond in this body. She responds from that body. Woo! Ow! <laughs> Makes me want to shout. Oh my. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Because I know, um, yeah, for, for me, you know, I, 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 you know, I can talk about it because one of the things that I was, that I was saying is, 
is I knew the vernacular. Like, say, for instance, you know all the words, like that he was grooming you. He was yeah. he was checking out your ability to, to, um, <laughs> What happened? <laughs> when he said, the question is, where am I right now? <laughs> yes, yes. Like a man and a boom shakalaka, right? <laughs> That's what PTSD is. It's, yeah. it's, I'm standing in the Euclid, but I'm in Vietnam. Yeah. So, so it becomes this thing of, I can say to you that I've been doing my work, right? I've been doing the work on me. And I am thankful. No, no, no. I'm, I, you know what, Winnie? I can say I'm walking down a new street, right? Because <laughs> <Right? laughs> I, I don't even want to say that. You know what? I I have checked it out. Like I came up close to it and, you know. To the hole. Yeah, yeah. skirt it around. Yeah. Right. No, I'm not yeah. even going down the street. Oh, new street. Right? <laughs> this, this this guy, this guy that um I know that had come over to my house. This this knucklehead when he comes over here, and this is one of them big guys because I like a big, I like big strong man. Right? He's over to my house and he's standing there talking to me, and he says to me you ain't all of that. And I was like, well, dude, beat it. <laughs> you know, you go, you, you ain't got to come this way. And so what I, what I recognized is, is that there was a time when I probably would have been just like, I probably would have internalized that and just been like, oh, okay. You know, I, I don't know. I probably would have not, even had the, re I was like, dude, just, just be gone. I don't have to take your abuse. I don't have to, all of this stuff that he might be grooming me for, dude. Right. Be gone, right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so I can recall there being a time when he, you know, we linger too long in situations that we know we could see the train coming. Mm -hmm. you, you well, see, when we can see the train coming, a, a lot of times we can't see the train coming because we aren't willing to see things differently. Yes, that's true. But, 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 but. <laughs> you have to be doing your work what? so you can see it different. I got to see this different. I got to see this as I don't need to prove to him that I, that I'm all that. I don't need to prove. I don't need to prove and I don't need to argue and I don't need to convince you to change your mind. There's 8 billion people on the planet. But you know what? Live your the, life. One of the things on my list, when we make out these lists about, you know, the men that we are involved with, one of the things that's on the top of my list is, is I want to be adored by somebody. I don't want to be tolerated by you. I want you to adore me, damn it, right? Mm -hmm. And if you don't, be on your merry way. Mm -hmm. I, I, I mean, you know, I don't think that that's too much to ask. Mm -hmm. If you don't. Yeah, it's kind of like the, the, it's the um, what's the list we were encouraged to write? Our deal oh. breaker list? It's yes. kind of like that. It's like yes. the deal breaker list. Yes. And yeah. so, so some people, when I say that I, you know, don't call me out of my name, some people think that that's a bit much. And I'm thinking like, I don't think so. As a matter of fact, it's yours. Right, yeah. right, right. It's your list. Like, right. It's your yeah. list. And it's right for the person that you're supposed to be in contact with. So what? wait a minute. Winnie, Winnie just put in here. <laughs> Winnie just put in the thing. Had he caught you in an earlier season? Oh, boy. Now, <laughs> When Winnie and I was younger, we used to do some 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 off the chain stuff that I can't even imagine, right? <laughs> this was all Winnie's idea. <laughs> oh, so you just throw her under the bus just like that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we know you're kidding. 
<laughs> trust and believe. I have my mirror. I know you're kidding. <laughs> Girl, we went through a phase where we had water guns. <laughs> And we drive up on people like we flirting with them and then pull it out and start squirting them. That's <laughs> <laughs> crazy stuff at, at, the, at the gas station. It's just crazy stuff. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, it mm. was. And I think we go through different changes in our lives at different times, you know, where we're empowered to say, yeah, do be gone. And then there's mm -hmm. other times, like, like even now during the pandemic, some people feel like this level of desperation to let me just connect with somebody mm. and, and are willing to accept stuff that they wouldn't have accepted just three years ago, you know, yeah. before we gotten into this. Because, you know, it's like this, you know, you have a desire to be in connection with people. Um, and and no, I'm glad that's that. That's true, but not but. I don't like but, sorry. No buts. Uh, that's true. The deciding to look at it differently, it doesn't mean you, and I know, I mean, I, I deal with people all day long. I, you know, got a client right now that is so not ready to be in a relationship, but they're on match. And I just said, well, you're going to match. You're going to become a vibrational match to someone that is going to match your vibration. Are you ready for that? <laughs> He's like, no. <laughs> okay, well, you know. <laughs> You got to make the necessary adjustments because that's what you're going to match with. That's the match. Mm. You're going to be matching with you. And we still have work to do. So, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We got to be mindful of, of yeah. what we're doing. I, um, I looked at, Erica had a post on her page. I don't know if it was a couple of weeks ago or not, but it seemed like it was off of a dating site. Okay. And it was all of this back and forth between her and these knuckleheads. And I was thinking to myself, like, oh, that whole thing was just like, I, I can't, I can't, I'm not one that can do dating sites because it is, it is, um, it's so irritating. Oh my gosh. I don't know whose idea it was. And people, you know, whatever. It, it, it's like even just reading some of the responses, you just want to just like, how do you wash that stuff off of you? <laughs> oh, goodness, Sandra. <laughs> it was just, it, I mean, it was just like, ah, just I, I, I can't imagine. And so ugh, if that's the trauma, from how do we go back? Okay, what's what's a good what's a good detox that we can do to kind of from what? I don't know. Here, <laughs> it, it's like it's like one of those things where you see the little emoji that's looking at the phone like, are you are you, you really saying that? Right? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It's it's an interesting uh, it's an interesting experience and. Mm. that's all I can say about it because people get married I mean at least that's what the commercials show um I do therapy for people who have met on dating sites and um it's really after a while you have to reveal yourself and that's the part where it I think the challenge is but we can hide behind the screens we can text I never met so many 50 and 60 year old men who can text. I hate texting, but people can text you paragraphs. Why do I want to do that? Right, right. I, I think that's amazing. Two page uh, emails, you know, so. Yeah. She says so much can be assumed online texting, yeah. I, I, um, I just am not, I, I'm not that, mm, not that, that person. I want to, I want to get a feel for a person and I don't know that I want to go through all of that. I guess if somebody was actually doing the, 
the digging for me and then come up with best best possibles but no nah, I wouldn't do I can't I can't yeah I mean it works for some people and for me it was great when I was in Kansas because I didn't know anything or anyone so it was fun to like get to know people um and because I have been married like 25 years by the time I turned 50 so I don't all I knew, I didn't know anything but I that's when I you know when I finally came home I was just like I'm just not a dater I don't I don't get into that um I'm not a, I don't I'm not impressed by fancy restaurants I'm always like you want to meet at Starbucks that's my addiction so <laughs> let's go there and let's hang out so I can listen mm. what you talking about right I don't, I'm not impressed with your fancy dinners and um but that's me some people want that some people like that so I have a girlfriend yeah. Who yeah. loves to be wined and dined and she's uh, got to choose the most expensive and you know and she's got as much integrity I mean whatever it's just um it, I don't know but it's different strokes for different folks and it works for someone because it's still here and it, the business is growing 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 right and mm -hmm. probably during this pandemic is even more yes yeah. so uh, you well, know Mm -hmm. and, and I'm a foodie, so I do I do love restaurants, right? I do love mm -hmm. going to restaurants. However, it's not conducive with the season that we're in. Mm -hmm. uh, but, I, I, but I will say that some of these mom and pop restaurants that's like big as a minute on a corner can be just as... Yeah, now I dig that. Entrepreneurs yeah. and yeah. I, yes, I, I yeah. love that. I mean, I love to go out to eat, but I also like to go out to eat with people that I love chatting it up with. Like when we go, go we used to go out and eating <laughs> before yeah. the pandemic. I like going out and talking and having a good time with people that, that I'm comfortable with. Right, right. Um, as opposed to a complete and total stranger. I will do it, but it's not my thing. And some people are like, hey, it's a free meal. Uh, That's an yeah. assumption too, right? Yeah. And and it's and free is not always free. That's as my mother would say, ain't no free stuff out here, right? And so even I, you know, some people feel as though they go out and they spend something and they think and they about to get something back in exchange for the money that they done spent. And I'm like, dude, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's just like quit tripping. And a matter of fact, I can pay for my own damn meal if necessary. Thank you. But you know that ain't gonna be that ain't gonna be uh what, what the what is. <laughs> so no so poo pooing on the dating sites. I just know that um it's, it's just not my thing. But um yeah yeah and 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 you know I um I try to sit in the space where now um because this is not always where i have been i'm really trying to inhabit the space where if somebody comes to mind and i think oh this would be a good match for so and so that i say that and set it up now i will tell you i have a good friend of mine that i tried to set up and he has still every time i say I got, I got the perfect woman for you. He just be like, no, nah, I ain't ready. No, nah, I ain't ready. And for two years now, it's like, no, nah, I still ain't ready. Like, dude, why don't you just say you don't want to be hooked up instead <laughs> of saying you ain't ready all the time because, you know, okay. Because that time may come where he's like, okay, I'm ready. Mm, yeah, it's just aggravating to me, <laughs> but. But I do, you know, when I when I get a feeling about something, sometimes it's just like the intuitive thing, like, oh, I should introduce, right? And that used to be a part of our society and what we did. People yeah. did it all the time. You know, I'm gonna introduce you to so and so, or you should meet my cousin, or but for whatever reason, that's not what happens anymore. So yeah. I don't know. You know. Yeah. So anyway, um, so so he says that we not only lose our words, but something happens to our memory as well. And, um, and so during traumatic situations, um, our thought processes become um, scattered, disoriented, muddled um, in all kinds of ways. Um, and so we can't 
even recognize or trust our own memories about situations and things like that um, to be congruent with the original thing. So as you go through, I don't know, um, as we go through this weekend, I, I guess um, his ready ain't Joe ready. Well, uh, who said that, Erica? No, Winnie said that. Oh, Winnie. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, so, so I guess the yeah, his his ready ain't my ready, and I I just I gotta I think so. To, so to be honest, this is the guy who I'm trying to fix up. He, you know, he's. He, he he's a he, you know he got it going on but it's it's with a woman that i think he's already attracted to mm. but because of his um because of who he is i don't think he approaches women like that so when i said to her when i asked her can i hook you up with so and so she was like is he single i was like oh yeah he's single <laughs> And she was just so like, oh my God, that would be so amazing. And so I started, I, I shouldn't have said anything to her because the rejection that he has to even, mm. you know, even doing this is, I don't know if she's taking it like it was a rejection of her, but I never told him who it was. Okay. So um, so I feel kind of bad that I got in the middle of it, but I was just trying to see how she felt and then how right. he, he was like, no, no. I ain't, right, you know. right. And if there is a rejection on her part and if it lingers more than a day, then go get, go do your work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because so. the reality is, is that wrinkles to him. You said it's wrinkles. Lost. Wrinkles to him. That's what I used to do in Mary Kay when people would be like, no, thank you. I'd be like, wrinkles to you. So, <laughs> it's like, it's okay. I'm going to hold on to me. Uh -huh. I'm going to hold on to me because we never got to meet, right? We don't know. Yeah, but they they have met, but they both are really shy. I wanted oh. to, like a, you know, I wanted to make it like, I wanted to facilitate yeah. that. Happen. Yeah. So, and then maybe there's a goddess that can send vibrational energies for healing and opening up of this soul that she imagines is she supposed to be in connection with. Yeah. There's still always work to do. There's always yeah. my work to do. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, Don't feel. Re I guess I'm saying, please try not to feel rejected. There's just work <laughs> to do because rejection is a distraction. Yeah, it takes us off our grind. It takes us off of our inner. You know, it's just it's a distraction. And it's such head work. It's such head it work. Is. It is. It. It's just so crazy. Um, because mm -hmm. then what? It's, so if we feel rejected in one column, then it starts to float over into yes. another column. And yes. And so, yeah, we do have to. We we've got to arrest that. Yes, I love that language. That's it's good. not about us. It is not, not about us. No. So, and oh. I don't know, you know, I don't know about his last relationship. I, well, you know what? I did meet that woman that he was, he was, he was with the last woman that he was with. And she is totally not in Ohio anymore. And, um, and so I don't know if that was a rough road for him or, you know, or what the heck happened. I don't know if he's a black guy that only dates white women. I don't know what the, mm -hmm. the, what the, what he is behind. Mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. All I know is, is he was like, oh, no, not ready. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you just got to honor that. Yeah. So anyway, um, Yes, there's work to do. There's work to be done. And uh, you say, do you want that to be a vibrational match for who you are right now? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, just think about um, just whatever. I mean, this, I'll, I'll be here tomorrow, even though Stephanie will not be. But uh, yeah. you know, just, just think about... Um, 
Yeah, the 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 you, the you, the you, the you. This is so, this is so good. Mm -hmm. You know, even when um <laughs> when he said good stuff, even when um, you know, a lot of times we want to point the finger and it didn't start with me and all of that stuff, but it's ours now. It is ours now. And yeah, it's ours now. And we can, like I always say, I said it about you, about being bold and, and, and audacious, that we have an assignment given to us by our ancestors to finish the race or at least run as hard as we can before we hand off the baton. We rose up to meet the sperm to do this work, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yes. Oh, <laughs> Good, yeah. Yes. So, yes. Um, just yeah. Just ah, I love this. So, so I'm um, I'm gonna go because I got to get ready. And okay. you want me to call you when I leave the doctor's office to see if you want to go sledding? Um, what time do you think you're leaving the doctor's office? I'm probably sorry. about twelve thirty ish. That's when I'll be at the hair salon. Oh. Um, oh. So. Let's play it by. Well, just check in. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody else want to go sledding? That's up. Yes. When he lives exactly. away, I think. I think. But um, yeah, I don't know that she want to go sledding. She <laughs> sledding. Are you serious? It's <laughs> in the teens out there, but it's so good for you. It is. It is. <laughs> if not now, some other time. Yeah. Hmm? Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah, blessings to you. Same All to right. you. Fabulous Friday. Yes, thank you. <laughs> All right, so it is time to go. Um, I didn't know it was this late. So y'all, thank you for being here. This stuff is so exciting to me. Um, of course, we are in this book, It Didn't Start With You by Mark Wolin. I will be here tomorrow. I don't work on the book tomorrow, but I'm here to just, you know, chat it up. If you are up at 730 and wish to chat it up with me or not, that would be beautiful. So anyway, I love you. Blessings to you. And um, I will see you tomorrow. Uh, it, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Have an amazing day. Um, and I'm not even going to say, say stay warm because there's all this therapy out there that talks about how good just being cold and, and, and stretching our body and challenging what we've already done, always done. There's so much good stuff out there. So um, yeah, get out there, do it, do life. Yeah, love you. See you. Thanks for all of uh, Winnie and, and Erica and Ruth and everybody. Thank you. Uh, I think Sarika was out there too. I don't know, but thanks to all of you for being here today. All right. Bye.